Hey everyone, thanks for tuning in to Test 2 Plus today. I am Trace, and as you can see, I'm here with a very special friend, Caitlin Hova. Hello, Caitlin. Hello. Caitlin is a local artist and musician, and she has a neurological condition called synesthesia. Yeah. It's really awesome. Oh. I mean, yeah. I think it's really That's awesome. all right. I don't have it, so I guess I'm just jealous. You might. One in 23 people are on a spectrum. We're going to learn all about synesthesia this uh, short episode. We're not going to do five episodes this series. We're just going to do this one. So make sure you stick around. Make sure you subscribe to Test 2 Plus. Let's talk about it. All right. So synesthesia is a neurological condition, essentially where the brain kind of crosses wires, right? Mm -hmm. You end up with uh, kind of these strange experiences, it seems like, to somebody who, I, I don't know if I have this thing, but you, you're, in your case, you are seeing colors related to music. Is that correct? Yeah, my favorite is a uh, pitch to color. If you have one type of synesthesia, the chances are really high that you have more than one type. Okay. Yeah. So do you just have the one type or do you have other types as well? Have you uh, identified those? Yeah, actually. So I have like numbers to colors and letters to colors and motion to sound. It's They found genetic links to synesthesia. So it's not too surprising that having one little mutation does more than just one thing. Absolutely, yeah. Sense. And DNA is kind of complicated, I feel like. Yeah. You know, science. <laughs> science is hard. Yeah. <laughs> so essentially what we're talking about, because it's kind of difficult to illustrate, um, it's the brain is kind of cross-wiring itself, and it doesn't harm the experience of the person. It's not a disorder. It's really uh, kind of crossing your senses, which if you checked out our Test 2 Plus episode on the senses, then you already know that we have more than the five senses that we've talked about here, you know, in the world. Like, we have more than seeing, touching, hearing, and feeling. And this is kind of another way of illustrating that. You can cross those wires and end up with an even richer experience of the world around you. Sure, Do, yeah. Would you say that's accurate? I think so. Yeah, so yeah. Basically, we're going to talk to Caitlin for a little bit here while we happen to have her in the office, and we grabbed her and we said, come be on Test yes. 2 Plus, um, to talk a little bit about synesthesia for you guys. So I just want to kick it off. Do you see colors with all music, or is it just specific types of music or certain sounds? Sure. I think it's, it's actually interesting. Okay. So all sounds have a color and shape and position in space, mm -hmm. but pitches are really vivid for me. So middle C up an octave and middle C down an octave are very much colors. Like the human voice is sort of grayish and brownish. Mm -hmm. It still has a shape, still has a position in space, but it's just not as fun to look at. Oh, yeah. so when I talk, you see, yeah. you're seeing color. When you yeah. talk, you're seeing like a color? Yeah. That's so neat. I mean, I thought it was completely normal <laughs> yeah. for the longest time. So. Uh, when did you find out you were a synesthete? Well, I was 21 years old-ish. I was in my final class for music theory. And at the very end, our professor mentioned, oh, some people can see sounds. And I thought it was completely normal. I never had to study for pitch uh, tests or anything. I just, I thought it was normal. I had no idea. You kind of were coming at playing music from two angles, whereas some other people may only come from the hearing part, you got, oh, well, I'm hearing this and I'm seeing this specific color, so I know that I'm on pitch. Yeah, I used to draw a piano on my piece of paper <laughs> and I would hear the notes and I would be like, okay, this color is this note, and I would go through and do the math for what the intervals were for interval tests. Because <laughs> I didn't know. <laughs> I was like, is, is it cheating? I don't know. I don't think so. Yeah. I don't think so. I, I don't know. That's yeah. pretty awesome. Yeah, but I, I thought it was so fascinating. Why did it take so long to figure out that this was yeah. in any way unusual? And I think the issue is that people don't ask why you get the right answer, how you memorize a piece. You just sort of are happy that it's over. <laughs> right, yeah. yeah, which is great. I mean, no one can experience the world through your senses but you and yeah. vice versa. So Absolutely. when you look out at the world and you see colors and sounds manifesting, that's something that's just your experience. It's and you just can't compare it to been. anything else. On, yeah, honestly, maybe my reds are your greens. I don't know. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's actually a question that we get a lot on uh, our other show, D News, which is pretty cool. Uh, do you think it actually helped your musical ability to be able to see colors? Because it seems like it would be able to see color when you hear sound. I mean, you see color. When yeah, for sure. I think it's a sort of a question of did having synesthesia make music more fun or did playing a lot of music do something to your brain that makes it so that you know 
the connections are a little bit more active. Mm, yeah, that's yeah. a good way to look at it. It's like a it. causality sort right. of uh, question. Yeah, that's a good way to look at it for sure. Um, when it comes to like certain chords, do they change colors for you? Like would a chord be a different color than an individual note? So chords are just a bunch of pitches assembled. Right. So each pitch has a very specific color. It's a lot easier for me to tell what a chord is when the pitches are a little bit more diverse, so not clusters, because mm -hmm. clusters, they just get like on top of each other, and it's a little bit harder for me to figure out what's going on. But uh, if they're spread out, you can see, for example, the C major, mm -hmm. C, E, G, C is red, E is yellow, G is green. Okay. And it's like, you can see it a little bit better. And they're spread out enough yeah. that they, you're not like, get out of the way. As opposed to I like, can't. you know, sus chords and clusters. And, mm -hmm. yeah. and is a minor chord like different? Does it have a different shade or something? Kind of. Uh, minor chords, uh, a lot of them have, you know, sharps and flats, and sharps tend to be a little bit more of an oval <laughs> of a shape, so it's like when you go up the scale, uh, the white keys on the piano are more circular, you can really see them, but the sharps and flats kind of like scooch this way, so they're a little bit uh, more narrow. Yeah. So I guess in they're that squished. way they feel a bit more pointed, mm. but not too much different. That's interesting. Does, you know, Western music is different from Eastern music. Does Eastern music look the same? I mean, the pitches are essentially the same, but do, do the combinations kind of change? Can you see a different thing when you listen to kind of an Eastern piece? Uh, probably, uh, I, I haven't checked that out in a long time since finding out <laughs> about this, you know, being very, you know, introspective. But I would imagine that the landscape of the piece, since they use uh, sharps and flats or just different uh, notes than we normally use, would just look a lot different than mm, ours. Yeah. That's cool. How neat is that? <laughs> Can you see the colors better in different situations, I guess? Is it, are they, yeah. are, is it like an overlay? So you're always seeing it even if like I'm holding my hand here, it would block my hand? It's or is very it more opaic. Like a, okay. So it's not something that necessarily blocks my point of view. So I like running at night <laughs> so yeah. I can see it. It's probably very dangerous, but I run in safe places. <laughs> uh, but otherwise, you know, driving while you're listening to music is fine. I've had it my entire life, so it's not it's something that you can kind of ignore, if that makes any sense. Sure. But it'll never go away fully. Right. Yeah. Which actually makes me wonder, does it kind of disappear? Can it disappear over I've time? Heard can it you can grow go. out of it or something? There's many theories as to how synesthesia manifests, and one of them suggests that everyone is born with it, and it's a part of the growing up process. So as your brain prunes and tries to make the most effective pathways, you lose these weird connections like, you know, seeing sounds and, and such, and you usually might lose them around the age of nine. Mm -hmm. But I've also heard about people that are synesthetes that have synesthesia, and they lose it through crazy or uh, prolonged series of depression or mm -hmm. something of that sort. But so, I haven't read too much about it. Yeah, so it's, it's yeah. pretty much a permanent brain pathway thing, mm -hmm. but it can, as brain pathways do tend to change, yeah. it can potentially go away, though there's not mm -hmm. a, probably a lot of research on it because it's still something that we've only been studying for a short time. For sure, yeah. Yeah. So A lot more research has been done more recently. Yeah. But it's still difficult to find people that know that they have this. Mm -hmm. So that's why I made the Synesthesia Network. So oh, What's that about? It is essentially a nexus in between people that have synesthesia and researchers. <laughs> oh. So if you have synesthesia, you can sign up, make a profile, put a face to a condition. And if you're not sure what synesthesia is or what, what it's all about, you can take tests to see, mm -hmm. hey, do I have this? And the main test that's on right now is the grapheme to color. Right, so, which is the yeah. words or letters yeah. to color. So say the yes. letter A is a specific shade of a color, and the letter yes. B is a, maybe a different shade, even slightly different. Oh, for sure, yeah. And if you test positive, you get a really cute little printout, so you can share it with your friends and hopefully start Of like some... the colors that you have? Yeah, of the that's colors cool. that you tested positive for. Yeah. So you can be like, guys, this is what I see, guys. Right exactly. This is it. This and is you can thing. start some good conversations. A lot of synesthetes like to argue about what colors things are. Oh, it's like people have yeah. different colors? For exactly. Oh, they throw down, man. Do it's you have good. like colors for any of the words and stuff as well, or is it just music for you? Uh, letters and numbers. Not like yeah. words, though. Not words. I mean, it's a combination of those colors? or Yeah, it's a combination of the colors. It's like the same thing with pitches. It's very organized. Each word has different uh, letters, which are different colors. But what I find is when I'm speed reading, mm. the, the first letter sort of 
smears? wipes over. It smears over the rest huh. of it, even though the other colors are still there. Yeah. Yeah. Do you have days of the week? My friend Mary yes. yeah. Searing is also a synesthete, and Ooh. she has days of the week. And she used to tell people, when you say they throw down, I think this is very funny. Yeah, yeah, yeah. she used to tell people in kindergarten, she used to come home and say she got in trouble because she was telling a classmate that they were writing their name in the wrong color. Oh, buddy. Because she was like, no, your name is blue. <laughs> no, what are You're, you doing? What are you doing? Why are you drawing your name in pink? Your name is blue. <laughs> Clearly. <laughs> yeah, I think also finding out so late in life that there's something that you experience completely differently, you know, be it the whole world. Childhood stuff like that makes a lot more sense. <laughs> You're like, wow, maybe I, yeah, I was bullied a maybe lot. It makes I, sense. I get I it now. Maybe I was kind of mean to people about their name color. <laughs> maybe, Mary? yeah, maybe there was something strange about <laughs> that whole situation. I want to go back just a little bit to when you were saying um, you listen to music while driving. I, I listen to music while I'm like trying to get stuff done. Do you listen to music while you work, or is that distracting? Oh, yeah, I can't do it. I have uh, a noise app that's just like <laughs> rain, so it's like oh, white noise sort like of. daredevil. Yeah, kind of, yeah. yeah. So I, no matter what, I have uh, noise-canceling earbuds yeah, Whoa. when I work, always, because otherwise I just see... Just like things yeah. pop in front of you, and, yeah. and when you you're know, focused, that's I don't want to do that. No, especially, I. it's funny, because I will see the thing before I realize what's happening and hear it. So it's like I'll be like coding or doing something or writing music, and then all of a sudden you hear like this little yellow dot, like meh, 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 meh. And it's like, no, what <laughs> is that? Oh, it's the phone. Yes, oh, yes. The that's kind of neat. Wow. Kind of. What a cool, but I mean, <laughs> yeah. it's, for somebody who doesn't have that distraction, I guess it's kind of neat. And yeah, I mean, when it comes down to that, though, <laughs> does that manifest in other ways, like uh, concerts and, yeah. you know, there's a lot of noise in the world. Yeah, it's a lot of stuff. Uh, I used to really like working in clubs. I play violin, so I would play with DJs, and they had the lights, and then they had the colors. But it was just really trippy and awesome. Yeah. But uh, I'm usually exhausted by the end of the week, so my favorite thing, if it's not like concerts or whatever, I like staying home and quiet. I always have earbuds, and I have those noise-canceling earphones, so mm -hmm. nice. Yeah, wow. Yeah. Uh, does it help you remember information. I did a video yeah. for D News about yeah. synesthesia and they said people often have better memories for phone numbers and for songs and for all sorts of things. So phone numbers, I'm notoriously awful. <laughs> <laughs> Just in general. I don't know my husband's phone number. <laughs> he always like quizzes me. It's so cute. But uh, for words, it's different. So I used to memorize my middle school and high school vocab list like right before the test because I'm the worst. Mm -hmm. And I would be like, okay, red same, word by means the way. Same. I this. Did the same. Because you just like draw the line. So I would just store what that word meant in the color. And yeah. just boom. Cool. Done. Yeah. Wow. You had like a little advantage. Kind of, but I, like I can't that. spell now. So yeah. it really comes back to get you. So I just want to point out synesthesia isn't something that necessarily you chose. It happens no. to you. And it's not, uh, it's not an active process. You're not like, here's the color that I, it's passive. Yeah. You don't get to control what those colors are. They are, are something that you're in. It's this part of you. Absolutely. But there's actually research that's trying to figure out how you can teach synesthesia, mm -hmm. especially the numbers and letters to colors to kids. Because yeah. for education purposes, the more ties you have to information, the easier it is to learn. Right. So I hope that works out. That would be nice. Yeah. I did read a study that said um, the magnetic fridge letters and numbers yes, yeah. affected 15%, I believe, of the people studied uh, correlated their synesthesia letter and color mm -hmm. with the magnetic toy that came out in oh, like, for the sure. 70s or the 80s, which is kind of crazy. It's pretty sweet. Yeah. Really cool. Yeah. Magnetic fridge games, guys. Get them for your kids. Brains are weird. <laughs> the brains are so <laughs> weird. Um, I guess... Last question, I get. Uh, yeah. Do you have a favorite song because of I the do. synesthesia? Does just like, is there a song that you're like, oh, this is. The oh one. man, besides my own music, of course, <laughs> oh, which you can find yes. uh, on the iTunes. On the iTunes, we and figured out right before we, <laughs> we started did, shooting. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but also, the Postal Service is uh, such great heights. It's my oh, favorite song. Oh, that is a song. great song. You can see the the spheres, just like the do 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 do. Oh man, yeah. it's amazing. So when yeah. you see a when you see a color. Does that kind of elicit a musical note in you? Like, do you feel like, oh, this is, you know, this is blue, so that's this specific note or anything? Yeah, it's really one directional for me. Uh -huh. I imagine some people might have bi directionality, mm -hmm. but I don't know. Yeah, which yeah. technically, I guess it could be two different kinds of synesthesia. You see a color and hear a tone mm -hmm. versus hear a tone and see a color. 
Yeah. Kind of like people see different colors with different words or days of the week or numbers and so on. It's very much a stimulus to a response. Right. Synesthesia. And everybody's a little different. They don't get to mm-hmm. pick what synesthesia they may have. Yeah. I, if I could pick, <laughs> Is there I a would favorite? pick. Oh, man. There's a guy named James Wannerton that lives in London, and he can taste words. I just think that's the coolest thing ever. What does your name taste like? I don't know. I should I want to know. Him. Email him and find out. <laughs> hey. I'm sure he's <laughs> like... Not all about like that anymore. It's kind of awkward to ask. Like, yeah. Everyone always asks, like, what color am I? You know, because yeah. I, I see colors with people, but it's not an aura. And it has to do right. with how I am reacting to you. Got it. So you're not inherently a green person. It's mm. just how I am reacting to you. Am I a green person? Is that what you're saying? Did you use that as an example? Maybe. <laughs> oh, cool. Yeah. Green's my favorite color. Yeah. Oh, well, what are the chances? I don't yeah. know. I don't know. I don't really know. But I don't really know what the yeah. chances are. <laughs> Yeah. We need more science there. Yeah. So you said earlier, um, but just to reiterate, one in 23 people, you said? Have yeah, this? I've heard numbers as high as that. Wow. And right now, I'm pretty sure that they've identified about 63 different types that mm-hmm. they know right now. They keep adding to it. I want to taste words so bad now. Yeah, I almost don't. He uh, he mapped out the subway of London or the... By flavor? By I flavor, don't want to do yes. that. No. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And apparently says that there's certain stops that are so bad, he'll just get off before. Because <laughs> he doesn't want to taste that. Yeah, he seems like a really cool dude. Yeah, yeah we should have him on next. Oh, yeah. That'd be cool. <laughs> Ugh, weird. Yeah. Word salad, for real. Word for salad. Real. I wonder yes. what word makes salad flavor. Yeah. I just want to thank my guest, Caitlin, for coming. And this has been super interesting. Oh, thank, thank you. Thank you so much for stopping by. Where can people find you if they have more questions? Absolutely. I'm available on the internet. <laughs> As Caitlin Hova, um, all my Facebook and Twitter is just Caitlin Hova, and otherwise CaitlinHova.com. Great, and uh, you can also find me if you have questions about synesthesia. I'm at Trace Dominguez. Before you go, in the description down below us, there is a link to a VR experience that we did with Caitlin for D News. It's actually virtual reality, so 360 degrees, and we attempted as best we could to try and show what. Caitlin sees when she experiences her synesthesia. It's beautiful. You guys did a really good job. Thank you. Thanks. I can't take any credit for it. I just got to watch it and get like my mind blown. It was so neat. So make sure you watch that and go find Caitlin if you have questions about synesthesia. You can also watch my D News episode if you're curious what's going on in the brain. And keep coming back here for more Test Tube Plus. We'll see you next time.